uh, how's it going Instagram? How's it going YouTube? Uh, glad uh, to be here. Thanks to those people that are joined in now, waiting for this to ramp up a little bit. Uh, just gonna plug the CD one more time uh, before next week. Next week, Friday, 228. The album is out. There's five singles out now, six singles out now of the characters from Cast of Characters. You can find them on Spotify and Apple Music and wherever you want to find them. So you can do that on your own. Uh, this is about the question and answer session uh, that we've been trying to do every week uh, here on Instagram and posting it eventually on YouTube. So if you want to go back, there's five or six weeks. Well, since about, there's one from December, but we've got five or six episodes up now. So you can go and check those out on YouTube or find them if you're already watching on YouTube. Find some more other questions. But some really good questions came in this week. Uh, if you're wondering where the questions are, I usually ask for them in the Instagram uh, story throughout the week. That's where I usually grab all the questions from. Um, if you want to drop one in, you're here live, feel free to do so. We try to always get to the questions that are here from people live, so feel free to uh, drop those questions in as you have them as we start getting to talk here. And uh, But before we do that, I just want to run down a little bit of what's happening. Next week, uh, the Cast of Characters Tour is starting, and we're going to hit three cities uh, with that music, and I'm really excited about that. We're gonna be Austin, Texas, uh, Denton, Texas, and Fort Worth, Texas. We're gonna be playing three nights, uh, Friday in Austin at Monk's Jazz, Saturday in Denton at UNT at the College of Music. We're gonna do a special video recording session in Kenton Hall. It's free and open to the, anyone who wants to come, and you just might be able to get a free CD if you can come and check that out, be in the live studio audience. And then on Sunday, we'll be at the TCU Trombone Summit. We'll be giving a clinic and a little bit of a concert with their trombone ensemble, so that'll be fun and exciting. So if you're uh, watching this in advance, then uh, I hope you can come out. And then after that, starting March 7th, we're heading to the West Coast doing Phoenix at the Nash, uh, LA on, the, on uh, the 8th at the Blue Whale, 9th and 10th, we'll be doing some educational workshops, still booking those. Uh, if you have any friends in the Southern California area that want to bring uh, Lucas Pino and myself into the school, feel free to let us know. That's the 9th and the 10th. And the 11th, uh, we're headed to Palm Springs and then Denver and then Reno. And that's the first leg. Well, I guess it's technically the second leg of the tour. But uh, then at the end of March, we'll be up on the East Coast. But I'll give you more details on that in March. But for now, we're just going to Jump in, get to the questions. Again, feel free to leave some in the comments on YouTube. We'll get to those in future episodes and leave them here in the Instagram. Again, one more time, if you haven't seen the new record, this is Cast of Characters. It's up uh, for pre-order to get a discounted uh, signed CD. If you're not going to be able to make it out to a show, uh, grab those now. Those will be gone by next Friday. So you won't be able to get those until unless you come to a show. Uh, until after all the shows are done. So uh, make sure you grab one now if you want one. And uh, here we go. We're going to jump into the questions. A really, really good question came in uh, as a DM, actually. I think it was in response to uh, one of the... It may not have been in response to one of the uh, prompts, but this was a really good question, and I wanted to address it straight away because I think it's probably something that everybody deals with. And I think this is coming, I don't know this person personally, his screen name, I think it's a he, is uh, Big Meech 744 And he says, when you first started playing, was it easy? And uh, I think anyone who is a professional musician that plays any instrument, let alone trombone, um, I'm pretty sure the answer is no for almost everyone. Not, not universally, but no, the answer is no. The question, was it easy when we started playing? Um, it, I don't think it's easy for very many people, especially on a brass instrument when you have like so many things to learn. You have all of the breath control, learning to buzz, learning what a trombone sounds like, how to put it together, how the slide works. There's so much stuff that goes into learning how to play an instrument. So the beginning is always going to be the most difficult part. Um, and then uh, he followed up with, do you ever get frustrated? And um I still get frustrated when I'm practicing. You know, practicing is a, both a joy and a frustration at the same time. Um, so, you know, I want people to know that it's okay to be frustrated when they're practicing. That's how we get better, you know. Um, somebody told me this, I think it was Lucas Pino actually. We were talking, I think probably during grad school at some point or maybe on a tour or something. And uh, 
we were talking about just being frustrated with practicing and the thing is that uh, he, he would say that, you know, the reason that you're frustrated, the reason you think you sound bad is because you've leveled up your concept. And I really think that that's true. So meaning your ears have gotten better, your expectation of yourself has gotten higher, the what you expect of yourself has gotten higher, what you want to hear has gotten more sophisticated, you're learning more, and now you're hearing more, and then you're trying to expect more of yourself. So if you can actually just realize that that is what's happening, you're increasing your ability to hear, you're increasing your ability to develop a sophisticated sense of musicianship, of artistry. So I want you to try to not get frustrated when you're practicing because everybody gets frustrated when, at first when they're practicing and I think it's just part of getting better. You have to you have to learn what you want to sound like before you can expect to sound like it. You know what I mean? So um, try not to get frustrated. It's a long process. It's going to take, if you pick up the trombone today, I don't think you're probably going to be a master at it for at least, you know, people say, what, 10,000 hours? So how fast can you get to 10,000 hours? You got to play 10,000 hours of long tones. That's what I think. So uh, if you know me, you know that the one thing I'm going to tell you over and over and over again, if you can only practice one thing each and every day, uh, long tones, fundamentals. If The more fundamentals you can do, the more music you can make in the long term. I truly, really do believe that. So... Um, I'm not sure of this person's actual name, but Big Meech, don't get too frustrated. I promise it'll get easier. Uh, the better you get, the easier it'll get. But you should always be pushing yourself in a practice session because that's how we get better. If you only sound good when you're practicing, you're not actually getting any better. You're only practicing things that you already are good at. So what's the point? Um, you're just playing. You're not actually uh, getting any better. All right, that was a really good question. So um, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Um, and then a couple other questions from the stream. Again, feel free to drop one in if you're here. Um, some some nice positive vibes from some people. No no questions from some people. Just I appreciate that. Bad wine, Jose Torres. Uh, thank you for the nice messages. Appreciate that. Uh, always some good spam messages. Gotta love that, right? Um, oh, there's another question here. Oh, I think this guy changed his screen name after he asked a question. Since he uh, asked a question before, because I, if you go back to, I think it was the first live stream, I was like, oh, maybe this is a fake account, but it's not a fake account. It's a real person. Uh, J. Smith Bone, he wrote, I feel my progress has slowed a bit. How do you normally change things up to avoid stagnation? Um, well, I think a lot of stuff has to be Plan in advance. If you don't plan in advance your what you're trying to get better at or what your goals are, you're going to stagnate for sure because if you're just practicing the same stuff over and over and over and over again, it's going to be really difficult for you to actually uh, progress because you're just kind of playing the same thing over and over again. So uh, having a varied repertoire, having an end goal in mind and having various paths to get there, working at, thing, working at things from opposite angles, focusing at uh, leveling up your basics so that whatever it is you're playing is going to get better. You know, that's one thing I think about whether you're practicing. I see there's a question just dropped in here about improvisation, but uh, we'll get to that question more specifically. But creating um, time to just work on the fundamentals is going to let you express yourself better, whether it's working on orchestral music or jazz music or improvising or anything. Um, leveling up those fundamentals, making sure you're playing with a good sound, always good art articulation, always good style, always and focusing on making music always. Um, it's going to definitely help you. Um, so when I'm feeling stagnant, like I'm not getting better, I go back to fundamentals and then I go to just learning music because that's part of what we have to do as musicians, like learning music by composers that I love, people I want to play with um, and just trying to do stuff that I really enjoy because that's going to help inspire me. So that's what I do when um, I'm feeling a little stagnant. I just try to um, find inspiration, you know, because uh, we're all going to go through those ups and downs of practicing and ups and downs of, you know, motivation to practice and feeling stagnant, like Jay Smithbone says here. And uh, so just find, some, find the music that really lights you up, the stuff that inspires you, and then uh, try to just... Um, Focus on that and focus on fundamentals. That's what I do. If I feel stagnant in my practicing, go back to the long tones. Get that sound, your sound together because the sound is the thing that's going to be uh, the most important in the long run. That's what I think anyway. 
Uh, Tony Musico, hey, what's happening? Thanks for being here, Tony. Uh, two questions. Let me scroll back here. Ryan Brown five five seven. He says, "How do you practice improvisation uh, by improvising?" That's the short answer. But the longer answer is related to this other question here. So I, I think I can answer both at the same time. Kizzy Graves Music asked, uh, "What limitations do you set for yourself when practicing improvisation?" So using uh, limitations is the way to practice improvisation. So. Um, you have to learn a tune first, right? You have to have the ability to play over the tune, knowing what the changes are, know the harmony, play it on the piano. You know, that's the thing that I do. You got to know the melody. You got to listen to recordings, all of that. But once we have done all that fundamental work and we get to actually practicing improvisation, I have a bunch of different methods to use to just to limit the improvisation. Because if we just play and play and play, this which is what I did when I was in high school. Uh, just turn on that Jamie Abersold and play over and chorus after chorus after chorus after chorus, but never actually working on it, anything. So I try to really zone in on working on improvisation just like I would work on an etude, but just with improvising over different parts of chord changes, saying maybe these two measures, or maybe there's one unfamiliar chord change where you don't really know the sound, so you got to get into the sound. So you make yourself like a little garage band play along or something to get inside um, to get inside of uh, the sound, get the mode together, you know, maybe one at a time, then connecting two together. Uh, other limitations you can set are rhythmic limitations. I like to do that a lot. My students will definitely tell you that I make them do this. So walking bass lines, uh, which is just basically doing quarter notes, right? And then doing eighth notes. So you end up doing eighth notes, which is scale practice. You're connecting different types of scales through different uh, tunes, doing all of that stuff, then maybe just I'm only going to play melodically and then I'm only going to play uh, with rhythms that don't start on beat one or if you have like a, cl a crutch, like you always play something starting on a certain beat or in a certain measure, intentionally starting in a different place, playing phrases that start on the third bar or fourth bar rather than the first bar or second bar, uh, all those different type of limitations. So you Maybe uh, after this is published, you want to go back and write down those real quick. But there's lots of ways to use uh, limitation uh, to practice uh, improvisation. That's really, other than transcribing and taking vocabulary from solos, playing it through the keys, uh, and then trying to get the style together by playing those transcriptions along with original recordings, which are all essential things to do. Uh, to actually practice improvisation, that's what you have to do. Break it down and practice chord to chord, four bars at a time, eight bars at a time, just like you'd imagine breaking down a really hard solo piece or a really hard etude. Uh, you wanna do the same thing when you're practicing improvisation. At least that's how I think about it. Um, hey, Venetius, what's happening? Thanks for being here. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, Tony Musico he says, does an interview with Steve Ture and talks about yes, uh, I'm not sure exactly what he's saying, but Steve Trey was one of my teachers. Uh, I got a lot from studying with Steve. Um, and we would talk about a lot of the same kind of stuff. He was always talking about fundamentals and the, you know, the importance of playing with a good sound, knowing the history of the trombone and the and history of the music. Um, you know, we would go all the way back to Dickie Wells and that was like one of the first things that we checked out was Dickie Wells. We did a lot of Lawrence Brown, which I also happen to love because I'm an Ellington fan, big Ellington fan, if uh, you know anything about me. But um, yeah, so I don't, I'm not sure what he was asking about Steve Ture, but Steve Ture was one of the most important teachers uh, for me. Steve and Wycliffe Gordon was an important teacher. And then my teacher from Eastman, Mark Kellogg, another really, really great trombone pedagogue, um, really, really great teachers. So it's really important, I think, to have a really great trombone teacher sometime in your life, you know, to talk about trombone basics, trombone fundamentals, and also how to teach, you know. There's a lot of people out there that maybe don't know how to communicate what they're doing. Um, and I'm working on it all the time, trying to get better at articulating how to get better at a specific thing and not speaking in generalities. That's something that I think a lot of educators sometimes do is go to the cliches and generalities. And even though those things are also true and mostly really important and true, uh, it's important to be able to find a way for you to explain it in your own way. And so that's something that I definitely think about and I'm trying to get better at all the time as an educator. So. 
Uh, feel free if you're here on the live stream or if you're watching later to drop in a question for future live streams. Happy to do, happy to answer that. But uh, I'm really glad for all of you that are here live. Oh, Tony, thank you. Tony, I appreciate that. He says, uh, I think you're one of the best improvisers on the trombone. Well, that's very, very kind. I'm just trying to, trying to be like Steve, trying to be like Wycliffe, trying to be like JJ, all the people that I looked up to. Marshall, Jilks, Ryan Keverly, Michael Dees, all these guys, uh, James Burton, Willie Applewhite. I could just keep going on and listing names, but I won't keep, I won't keep on doing that. Um, I'm going to go to another question here. Uh, here's something from Jazzboy2020. I think he asked a question recently. Uh, I guess it's not a question. He says, yes, I've heard the new single, Killer on that one. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, here's a question from Lucho Ramosum. Uh, he says, do you recommend practicing fourth intervals in a scale? Uh, yeah, I. there's a video that I have on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, it's called Major Scale Workout. Uh, and in that workout, we do scales in thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths. And you can do it in octaves. We do triads and seventh chords, uh, both all ascending, all descending, and then alternating directions. So meaning... And then you switch. Uh, same thing with seventh chords. And so you go all up, all down, and then up and down. So that's our scale workout. You can apply it to melodic minor, harmonic minor, harmonic major. Ideally, you could so you could do all four parent scales and uh, get through them all with that. Thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, and triads and seventh chords. So that's what we do. Um, yeah, I forget the exact title of that video, but it's definitely, it's actually the most viewed video on my channel. So if you want to go and check that out, Major Scale Workout, you can find it, um, but it's good. Oops, sorry about that. That's my dog. He's uh, having a little bit of a barking attack. Um, so yeah, that's that. Here's one from one of my students. What's up, Isaac? Uh, do you have any tips on motivating yourself to practice? Um, you know, to me, it has to be a daily practice, like just like whatever you do in a day, part of your routine. Um, it's just a non-negotiable, a non-negotiable thing. Um, you're not going to get better if you wait for um, inspiration to strike, you know, like you, it's got to be something that you're just going to do, um, just like you're going to get up and take a shower and whatever else, eat, you know, you're going to also practice. Like that's just what you have to do. I used to really struggle with literally not being able to function until I would get my practice time in. Like I couldn't socialize. I couldn't do anything. I would get stressed. I would get, and just because I had made, internalized it and made it part of my daily routine and part of what was important to me, uh, it's changed over time, so I don't get quite as stressed anymore. Uh, but I try to practice and get it in when I when I know I can. But it's not as part of a daily routine as it used to be. But if you can get it to a point where it's non-negotiable, that way you just show up and practice every day. That's the ideal. So you don't have to think about it. Otherwise, it's going to be obviously difficult to keep the motivation up. But yeah, of course, like motivation goes up and down. It's you're not going to always be in a high amount of practicing part of your life. You know, I, I do think being when you're in college is definitely the time to spend getting those fundamentals really, 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 really solid and making sure that you set yourself up for success later. Cause all that practicing that I did in college, uh, all that stuff that I was working on then has definitely set me up in the future for, um, being able to, when I, travel a lot and don't have a lot of time to practice to to sustain you know chop wise and just be able to play you know quartet gigs or trio gigs on the road for you know a week straight or two weeks straight just playing like that and having to kind of carry the load myself so um get it into your routine don't have to so you don't have to think about it and i do the same thing with composition if i'm in a composition mode it's not negotiable it's just like part of what i'm doing and uh, those were the most productive periods of my practicing, for sure. When I was in grad school was definitely when I was most productive practicing. Uh, and that's because I just it was non-negotiable. I was going to practice for at least X amount of time per day. And uh, I think at that point it was three hours, I was saying. I had to practice for three hours. So I uh, hope that helps, Isaac. Uh, but I'll see you soon, I'm sure. <clears throat> I think we got time for a couple more questions here. Uh, you're very welcome, Isaac. Have a good weekend. 
Uh, he said, Caden Schilling says, what are some skills or concepts or techniques that you would recommend trombonists master or at least learn for jazz at the college level? What are some skills or concepts? Well, I think the first thing, you, I think you need to transcribe as many things as you can, learn how to play like JJ and Curtis and Slat Hampton, get the vocabulary together, uh, figure, look ahead to like the people you look up to, the things that they're doing, what, they, what types of skills they have, uh, and figure out what they can do that you can't do yet. And I'm not saying like you need to put it on a pedestal, but you need to be aware of what are the skills that they have that you don't have, and then you need to do those so that you can compete in the marketplace for gigs just like them. So if they can play fast, if they can play high, you don't need to do it exactly in the same way as them, but there's just certain like craftsman tools that you need to be able to do. You need to be able to play Cherokee. You need to be able to play Donnelly. You need to be able to play basic bebop stuff. You need to be able to sight read chord changes. You need to be able to read treble clef, tenor clef, in case you need to uh, read a tenor part or a trumpet part. Uh, you need to be able to sight read as close to perfectly as possible. You need to be able to play modal tunes, meaning like Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock type changes that involve modal mixture. Um, so at the college level, you know, that's what we focus on in my studio is learning tunes, different types of tunes, how to navigate that harmony. We sight read every week. Sometimes it's duets, sometimes it's tunes. Um, but all those things, like you're trying to learn to play jazz as best you can. Because I think like playing bebop is like the most specific and then playing like super like specific modal jazz stuff is also super specific in a different way. And then you're free to like explore into your own zone after that. Um, but being able to deal with harmony at a high level, uh, dealing with the piano, learning to arrange, learning to compose is going to set you up for your masters where you can kind of get more artistic, I think, and be a little more focused on the quote unquote, what's my voice, what do I want to do with my life, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's what I think. So Caden, hope that uh, gets you moving in a direction. Um, but the other thing is fundamentals. <laughs> fundamentals, uh, be able to play the trombone at a high level, be able to play in a variety of styles. Excuse me, and um, yeah. That's what I would say. All right, Jazz Boy. Oh, that wasn't a question. He says, uh, I've heard the new single. That the new single he's talking about is The Sorcerer. That's this guy on uh, the package of the new record. Uh, this guy in red here. And uh, I think it's actually one of my favorite, favorite things I ever, ever composed. And it's the opening track. And it sets up the whole record. Uh, the record is kind of built on two triads. You can see that. There's a post on Instagram. I was talking about that uh, very recently. So you can check that out if you want. But uh, okay, I got to run. Thanks for being here today. I appreciate you all. Appreciate your questions. Feel free to DM me a question, leave it on YouTube, and we'll get to it uh, in another episode, hopefully, maybe live from Austin next Friday. All right. So have a good week, and uh, we'll see you soon.